So here recently, a couple of different companies reached out to me to send me uh, some kind of multi-purpose devices that could be either used for uh, a mini PC or networking gear. And uh, of course, I'm gonna review those. Those videos are coming up, but I wanted to make sure that I could get the most out of the testing with regards to making sure that they're actually providing the bandwidth that they claim to provide. So I did a little research and I found out that you can pretty easily install an iPerf3 Docker container uh, with just a simple CLI command. And we're gonna take a look at how to do that. We're also gonna take a look uh, at what uh, a Docker Compose might look like for this. Um, but if we jump over here to uh, their hub.docker.com page for network static slash iPerf3, uh, we can see that this was updated 15 uh, days ago. Uh, they've got binary, binaries and source code for this. Uh, at this URL, you can see their, their GitHub repository and their Docker files here if you wanna look at that. Right below that is the command that we're gonna run. I've modified it a little bit because uh, it's it's got a dash dash RM. Uh, I want it to be a dash D. I want this to be up and running all of the time so that I can just ping it whenever I need to to make sure that I'm actually getting the bandwidth that I should be getting on whatever device I'm on. I should also mention that for this to work properly, uh, you'll, you'll need additional software on your client computer. So if I, we're gonna do some testing on the computer that I'm on right now. Uh, so I did have to download some software to this computer to do the full iPerf test. And we'll take a look at that as well. But before we get into all of the installation and that sort of thing, let's actually take a look at kind of what this test looks like. So here on my desktop, I'm um, actually in my downloads folder. We can see that I've downloaded iperf3.exe. It came with uh, a, a DLL file that goes with it. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're actually going to right click. I'm on Windows 11. Your system may be different. Uh, so uh, I'm only gonna be demonstrating this on Windows. Uh, if you've got Linux, Ubuntu, whatever, you probably know how to do this already. Uh, but for the Windows users, uh, we're just gonna right click and click open in terminal. Uh, and here we've got uh, our, our path right there. And what I wanna do uh, is actually dot slash iperf3 uh, and then uh, dash c and then the IP address. Now I've got two different IP addresses here. These are both going to go to the same server. The dot 15 address is a 10 gig NIC. Uh, that, that's uh, a 10 gig RJ45 on my Synology device. Um, whereas the dot 36 is a one gig RJ45 on that same Synology device. So they will both give me access to this container, but they will, uh, they will not give me the same amount of bandwidth when I request this test. I should also mention that on the PC that we're on right now, I also have a 10 gig Mellanox card in there uh, with an SPF plus cable plugged into my switch. Uh, so we're gonna get that 10 gig on my on, on, on the client side, no matter what. However, we're going to restrict that to either 10 gig or one gig on, on the server side, depending on which IP address I use here. So let's first do the, the one gig test on the Synology. Again, we're gonna run dot slash iperf3 dash C, and then the IP address for that one gig connection. And if I hit this, we're gonna give it a second, there we go. Uh, we can kind of get an idea of how many megabytes and how many megabits we're getting. Uh, this is a 10 second test, uh, and it's gonna give us a, a basic idea of what we're looking at as far as actual transfer there on a per second basis. So if we jump over here to my Synology uh, server, this is uh, obviously Portainer on my Synology server. And if I look at the logs for this iperf3 server, just click right there. Here we can actually see the tests that I've run uh, here recently, uh, and we can kind of see what's going on there. Ab above this is another test that I'm gonna show later, one that I've already kind of pre-recorded, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, here we can see this is the one gig test that we just ran a moment ago. Um, and we can see that our, our transfer was 1213 megabytes per second, which is basically maxed out on a one gigabit connection. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. Uh, so we've got almost a full uh, 1000 megabits for that entire connection. So let's I'll tell you what, let's pop these open in a couple of different uh, side by side windows here so we can see them in real time in action here. So what I want to do is I actually want to do the dot 15 IP address. Again, that's our 10 gig connection uh, on my Synology server. Uh, and my, my PC here also has that 10 gig connection running through a 10 gig switch. So this should give me really good results, but we're gonna find out for sure if I'm really getting all of my transfer speeds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this command again. And here we can see that I'm actually only getting about five gigs on this. So that tells me that either I'm only running half duplex or, or maybe I've got a driver issue. There's something not giving me that full 10 gigabit connection. So that's something that I've learned that I need to address on my setup here to make sure that I get the full 10 gig. Like, don't get me wrong, five gig is amazing. Like five gig is 
That's great. Uh, however, uh, of course, I'd like to get the full 10 out of it. So now I know I've got some troubleshooting to do on my end. So in addition to having this recording space, my little studio area here, I've also got a little uh, computer set up uh, in the house, just kind of a dedicated space where I can hang out and do stuff in there and have it separate from the studio. So I can kind of separate my brain a little bit with regards to that. But uh, the little mini PC that I'm using has a two and a half gig uh, network card in it uh, that is plugged into a one gig switch and then plugged into uh, my Deco X55 uh, mesh network. So those are both one gig connections. Uh, even though I've got the two and a half gig NIC, I'm still only connected at one gig, but the, the mesh node that's in there is connected to the mesh node that's in here where the Docker server is. So when I run those tests, I'm going to get some kind of skewed numbers because now I'm going to be reliant on the, the wireless connection between the two nodes to give me the amount of bandwidth. So, uh, so th there's, there's, the reason I even bring this up is there are things to consider uh, when you're dealing, especially with a wireless network, when there's wireless involved anywhere in there, that's going to have an impact. And I kind of want to show you that here in this next little section of this video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is run this 10 gig test. And here we can see that I am, I am not getting anywhere near that. Of course, I am again, uh, going from two and a half gig to one gig to one gig to Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi to one gig to 10 gig. So there's a lot of jumps in there that are causing this issue. And then after that, of course, I've got, I'll do this one gig test and it is basically the same end result because I'm limited by the bandwidth across the wireless network more than I am the actual uh, hardwired ethernet connection here. So a couple of things just to kind of keep in mind there that if you've got a wireless thing going on, that will definitely have an impact. Um, and, and I just kind of wanted to touch on that real briefly so that we've got an understanding that uh, latency and, and things will happen, especially if there's wireless involved. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually come over to my portainer here. I've got this iPerf server three or iPerf three server. I'm gonna click remove. I'm just gonna get rid of all of that information. Like, so I'm gonna leave the image. I don't wanna have to re-download that image. It's not big, but I just don't wanna download it again. So what I wanna do is actually open up um, my dbtech.com website right here, where I've got installation methods for uh, for this iPerf Docker server. And again, I've got a CLI method as well as a Docker Compose method. Now I'm gonna be honest, at this point, I've only done the CLI method. Um, I haven't done the Docker Compose, but we're gonna take a look at it together for the first time. So let's grab this. We're just gonna copy that. Uh, we're gonna pop open a terminal window here and I'm gonna SSH into my Synology server. Okay, so here we are, we are logged into my Synology server. So I'm just gonna run uh, this command that we've got highlighted right up here on my website. And I'm gonna hit enter. And just like that, we're back up and running and now we can run our test again. Um, so if I come back over uh, do, 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 to here, right, and I can run this now. And there we are, we're getting our, our five gigs again, just that quickly and easily. So that's how easy it is to get the Docker container up and running using just the command line. You just run it and it, it comes up and then it's good to go. Um, it is also, like I said, running detached so that if I close this window, uh, the Docker server uh, stays up and running. Uh, so we don't have to worry about leaving that window open all of the time. That's why I like to run that dash D in there. I should have probably removed the dash RM, but here we are, right? So that all still looks as good as it did before, so nothing to worry about there. So let's go back over to Portainer and uh, get rid of that server again. So we're gonna click right there. We're gonna remove, we're gonna remove all of that information, click remove. Um, and then we're gonna go into stacks once that's done and we're going to create a new stack. Um, and we're gonna call this iperf uh, server. And then I'm gonna minimize this screen and I'm gonna come over to here and grab this. And I'm gonna paste it in and we're gonna see if it's gonna work, right? So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna click on deploy the stack, see if we get an error message. Okay, we did not get an error message. So let's open this up. Oh, it exited. So let's see. So this needs a dash S to run in server mode. Uh, if we actually look over here, we can see that dash S uh, right there. Um, so it's probably just better to run this in command line the way I've got it listed here. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is remove this before the, the, this the Docker Compose before this video goes live, but just know this is the, the CLI command that I ran so that I can get a, a, an iPerf server up and running so that I can test this new hardware that I've got coming uh, to share with you guys here in the upcoming weeks. So guys, there's the video. That's all I wanted to share with you is how to get an iPerf server up and running in Docker so that you can test other hardware against that server. Make sure you're getting the most bandwidth out of each of your different devices. Uh, oh, you know, I should, I, I missed a step and I need to go back and share this. Um, let's, 
Let's look for iperf3. Uh, we're gonna go to iperf.fr. Um, and then you can, from here, you can download uh, the individual client for, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Windows, 64-bit, 32-bit, Android, Apple, iOS, Ubuntu, they've got a, a Fedora, they've got a ton of different options in here that you can download the client side like we looked at on my PC here to then communicate with the server side of things. Uh, so I'll leave a link to this in the description down below as well. Um, but that's it, that's how easy it is to get an iperf server up and running and then communicate with that server to do the testing to make sure you're getting all of the bandwidth out of your device. But I think with that said, I wanna wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. Uh, also, I've been mentioning this in my videos here recently. If you'd like to get access to my videos with no ads, that's no baked in ads, that's no YouTube ads, no ads, no ads, no ads, uh, head over to either Patreon, uh, become a channel member, or join dbtech.fans uh, for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you'll be supporting me, helping me out quite a bit, uh, as well as getting access to my content with no ads, no interruptions, anything like that. So something to consider if you're interested in that. But with that said, like I said, I'm gonna wrap this up uh, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.